Hello, anybody here? Hi, Bill. It's Claudia Brainwood. Oh, hi there, Claudia. Wow, super fabulous. Give me one second here. <clears throat> they uh, they did not vote to rescind. The three ladies all did an about face, and they basically they went against their word. They went against what they said they were going to do, and so everybody was pretty yeah. pretty shocked. Yeah. I heard the mayor saying afterwards uh, she didn't ever promise that. She just promised to listen to people and see what they had to say, but that is not true. In the board meeting, um, they they announced the results of the petition were not sufficient. Yes. To, yeah. To, so did they say what the amount that it was, that the, the amount that the petition were not sufficient by? Yeah, there were... Question. There were there. It was really complicated because I mean, so I I did live stream it so we can go back and we can review exactly what the, what they said. Okay. Uh, and uh, let me just say really quick, Terry, I, I'm talking to Claudia Bramer right now. Do you want to call into the bridge and join the conversation, Terry Farrell? Oh, well, yes. Yeah, so thank you. So there were three, like three different categories that they had to review. They had to review properties that were within the, uh, the modified zone and then within, you know, a hundred feet away. I don't remember exactly how the, the three were defined and they did, yeah. they did read those yeah. off, but Inside, adjoining and then across the street. That's right. That's and right. Since the across the street was all over the place, all over the village, literally. Mm. Yeah, so it was a complicated affair. It was it was a very complicated it's Terry. Hi Terry. So, um I you know, the thing that I that makes me just scream that you know, I I'm I'm thinking about issuing a press release by by concerned citizens of Endicott like uh later tonight and just just remind the press or try to get the press to mention it that about the the additional and let me get your opinion on this, because I think you mentioned this in one of your letters, the GML 239M par subparagraph 5, that there was basically if there are re recommended modifications that come back from the 239 review and you ignore it, you you it, it's a supermajority requirement. There, there were a ton of failures with their law. I'd have to pull up my other, one of the letters that I wrote to the village board back in the spring. So I cannot, I cannot believe they did not go forward with rescinding because now we will have to sue them and challenge it with an Article 78, which is going to cost everyone more money I know. instead of them just doing the right thing. So the 239M is one of the allegations that I put in the letter, and we're okay. going to have to put that into the lawsuit. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm thrilled it's if you. So yeah, I it's it's and it's I mean I've never I, I've been around you know I've been I've, I've been through a lot of these different kind of permit proceedings and and I've and been I to and been and been to a lot of different town meetings and just to see this level of corruption I don't know what the motivating influence is but they certainly are not following the will of the people. It's so bizarre. I've never seen anything like this in years, like 20 years. No, I've covered a lot of these too, and I really don't understand what's going on. I know that the um, trustee at the end there tried to say that she wasn't <laughs> being um, bribed or anything, but I don't know what exactly the motivating factor is to really go against so many people in the village. I've never seen such a thing. Mm -hmm. And they really are leaving the village open to any project coming in right now without any further review. It's, it's you know, Bob, the attorney there, was kept trying to say that over and over again, and those women were not listening to him. He really was trying to get them to realize that there was this potential of a facility coming in there and gaining vested rights, which is the idea that once this law passes and someone gets a building permit and they the go in and start, start operating, operating they're, they're going, going to be allowed to continue operating, operating even if the rules change later. Mm -hmm. so, and, and it really shouldn't be up to the mayor and two trustees to decide if this facility should come in or not. A, a facility of this nature like Sunjil should be undergoing, like Bob said, a special permit review. You know mm -hmm. that. They go mm -hmm. through tons of the planning board, site plan review, you know, where's the parking going to be, where are these emissions, um, you know, how tall are the stacks going to be, 
all of that stuff. And they are basically saying, oh, we looked at it and we're fine. The, the three of us are good with it and that's all that needs to happen in the village. Well, this is ludicrous. This is what I was going to ask you. This is another thing I wanted to ask you about is, um, so my understanding is before they can get a building permit, the decision about a site plan review by the planning board is up to the code enforcement officer. Is that your understanding too? Well, yeah, kind of, but, but I'm nervous that part of the, the new law, law made it so that there is no site plan, plan review. They, they made it a permitted facility, facility. so I could, I could still make the argument that the site plan review was needed, but if the building code inspector says, no, nah, we don't need that, if it's possible it could come in without any planning board oh. review. Uh, I just thought that, I just thought you were talking about it's a permitted use, meaning you don't need to get a, spe no. a special permit. No, meaning they made it in the table of uses. If they made it a P, letter P, which yeah. means permitted as of right. Yeah. No, no, no further review. Well, oh, that means no. F wow. So that means that generally a yeah. site plan review would not be done. Oh, that's terrible. I thought that was discretionary. And I don't think they have any clue what they've done. Well, I submitted a proposal to them, and they kind of referred to that at the end, for the end of the meeting. I don't know if you were still watching, but. Mm -hmm. Where she, she said, oh, well, the, the proposal they put forward wouldn't allow crushing or grinding that they want to allow the glass facility to do. Mm -hmm. but, but they're completely reading it wrong. It, it would allow grinding and crushing. What we were trying to exclude was incineration and right. burning and any kind of process that <laughs> would involve chemicals. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. She didn't read it right or she doesn't understand what she's doing. Like, she, she admitted she's, she's not an expert. expert. She should not be doing this herself, herself the mayor. So you were saying that you, you what you're saying is that you you had drafted a, a proposal for a, a different zoning law or what? I, am I understanding? I, yeah, they wouldn't bring it forward. Now she's saying, oh, well, we don't want to bring it forward because it's too restrictive. But, and she mentioned this grinding and crushing concept as something well, that I wrote into the law that would not be allowed. But she's wrong. I wrote it into the law so that grinding and crushing would be allowed. That's fine. Well, it's it's it's, too, it's like mechanical, basic mechanical processing. It's too restrict. It's too restricted. Right. No, it's yeah. it's too restrictive because it 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 would it would be it would restrict Sunjeel. It would make it so that they couldn't come in. So that's right. But she didn't say that. She came up with this other logic. Mm, she still wants Sunjil in there. That's why she doesn't want any any other restrictions, I think. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. But so basically, she lied to us all summer. Lied to us. Just lied. I know. That whole, that whole, it was this big charade about rescinding, rescinding, and her, it didn't even make any sense. She said, well, why, you know, people would go, well, you just, you did all this work to push this zoning law through so quickly. Why would you want to rescind it suddenly? And then she says, well, because the DEC is doing such a good job. And I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to like shake my head, like side to side, like, like, blah, 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 like what? <laughs> you know, it's like, what? Well, it doesn't make any sense. It was a charade. Yeah, it was a charade, and, you know, with all due respect to DEC, they, they're not, you know, they, they shouldn't be the last and only say here. The village should have left open the opportunity for the, the project as well. And basically what she is saying is, I don't care about the planning board. I'm, I'm approving it myself, singularly. Well, her and the other two women trustees. Unbelievable. So, Terry, what, what did what did you have to think about what went on tonight? Your comment was great, Terry, by the way. Oh, thanks. I, I learned a lot from you, Bill and Claudia. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you know, just being in this process and, you know, being, getting involved and, you know, I mean, you know, when you really want to fight for what you believe in, and especially if you have a personal experience and, I mean, I just couldn't believe some of the things that Linda was saying as far as... Wait a minute, wait, you know, wait, wait, wait a minute. Just let me, let me interrupt really quick, and, and because I'm not sure, I never even properly introduced Claudia. Claudia Bramer is the attorney for No Burn Broom, and I'm very grateful 
that uh, you you're, uh, you called in and you're giving us your uh, your comments on uh, what went on tonight. And this is Terry Farrell. Terry Farrell is one of the co I would say co-founders of No Burn Broom, and she's also a co-founder of Aware. And you're also running for Broom County Legislature District Six. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Terry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, no. Thank you for that um, introduction and. You know, and I have had really great conversations um, with Claudia and you, you, and I really just feel that after tonight, I'm just, I'm heartbroken. Uh, but one thing I can tell you guys, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, several members of the board for the Union Endicott School District were on the call, mm -hmm. including the superintendent, um, Dick Testa was on that call, Pamela Riddleberger, she, her and her husband were on that call. So... You know, they were listening in, and, you know, right now, the way that this stands is, I mean, I, I'm just, I mean, a sad day in history for Endicott is all I can say, because three people who literally said they don't know what they're doing just put the fate of, um, you know, any company now can come in. I, I'm, I, I'm so heartbroken. I mean, I was getting text messages from people that were saying, um, I'm devastated, I'm heartbroken, I'm... I'm, I'm mad, I'm angry, and, you know, I, I know we're emotional, but we live here, and, you know, our kids go to school here, and, you know, they play in our playground, they swim in those pools back there, I just, I just don't know where we go from here, and I mean, I don't know even if um, the possibility for the school to sue the DEC still even exists, I mean, I don't know what we do from here, Claudia, I mean, what? Well, we need. We, we certainly need. It doesn't necessarily have to be the school. School would be a great idea because they have a budget, and that would that would be. It would just replay the dynamic in Fenton exactly, uh, pretty much, uh, because it was it was the school. There was a school district lawsuit, and there was a citizen lawsuit lawsuit, and Claudia here defended the citizen lawsuit. There's a good question for you, Claudia. Can you just? It might be really instructive for people that are watching this tonight to. Uh, just talk about Fenton at all. Do you see any parallels between what happened, what did happen in Fenton, and what was your role, and and how is it how is it similar to what happened here? You're, you're taxing my brain this late at night, but to, to, to recall the mm -hmm. But the similarities are that we have this uh, project that was you know potentially dangerous to the community. Residents um, hired me to help them oppose the project, and then in that case, the school board actually hired their own attorney to oppose the project as well because they felt like it, there was a potential for the students and the families there. But the big difference is that in that case, um, you know, the board who was looking at the project at the time. They ended up getting it to the zoning board, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. and they made the determination not not in a lot of use in their village because or town, sorry, town intended. They um, felt that it did not meet any of the criteria for an allowed use there, and it was basically because of all the all of the community and the board. Um, you know, they listened to that with respect and it didn't just blow off all of their concerns. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, the village board has gone out of its way to open the doors, not just wide, but swing them way wide open for businesses to come here without any restrictions. And, and you're seeing the mayor and the two trustees completely disrespecting all of the concerned citizens Right. In the village, it's just beyond words that they. I, I don't even know what is the word like, Terry. That it's, it's disappointing. It's maddening. Um, it's just undemocratic. Undemocratic. With a small body. Undemocratic. <laughs> that's the the best word to describe this. And you know, I, I have to tell you, it is very interesting because when I, when I was asked to get on this call um, back in March, of course, you know, one of the village trustees knew uh, my background in environmental science and, you know, knew that I, um, you know, cared a lot about the community. 
um, of, of my involvement here. And, uh, you know, it was Bill that started talking to me about the case in the town of Edmonds. And, and when your name came, came up, and when I said that call to you, the first thing you had said that, um, that's how this whole thing started in the town of Fenton. It was a somebody calling in that was frantic um, about what was going on there. And, you know, it's, just, it's interesting how these cases are paralleled. And, you know, I mean, in fact, it was the coordinating review um, that Bill had described to me in detail that I ended up uh, calling up Nicole Wolf and having a conversation with her because at first they were neutral. And I asked her if anybody had ever spoken to her or had they been part of a review. And she ended up calling the superintendent of um, the, you know, of the Shenango Valley School District and having a conversation. And that's when the letter was drafted. So, you know, we're all in the same, I mean, I feel that there are, you know, thousands of people who really feel that, you know, we should have gotten this type one speaker. We should have had a full environmental impact statement. We've been pushing for that from the beginning. Now, you know, elected officials are coming on board. It's like, it's hitting like wildfire. But yet, these three women still continue to hold our faith in their hands. Yeah, yeah, and, and ignore everybody's concerns, I know. And I really felt like I was all summer long, um, I had faith that that board was going to rescind the law so that we wouldn't have to go forward with the lawsuit. And as Bob was saying tonight, the village attorney saying over and over again, let's come to a compromise where we can protect the village but still allow economic development. And they just refused to follow his lead on that. I just really just, nobody's sleeping tonight. It's it's nobody's sleeping tonight. It's it's funny it's funny uh, Claudia to hear you say that it sounds like that you don't it sounds like you don't look forward to a lawsuit even though it's something you know it's kind of like your job or whatever it's like you even you're like I don't want to do this yeah no I don't think any of the residents want to sue their own village but at this point I don't think there's much uh, hope we have because to even when they brought up the idea of a compromise law to, to add some restrictions, it seems like the mayor and the other two trustees weren't even willing to do that. So what was, yeah, so that, I was trying to get a handle on that. So they were trying to say that, uh, you know, it, it was going to be a new, it was going to be like a parallel zoning law that was just going to say no burning. But that, but that's not going to fly. It's with the same three, the same three people are going to oppose that. Why would they think that? Ha why would they think that ha would have any chance of passing? Uh, and well, now I think it's pretty clear they won't. They, the the three women won't vote for that mm -hmm. because they do. They, for whatever reason, they think that the San Joe plan is good for the village. You know, I think part of that is I've had some correspondence um, back and forth with the mayor and. You know, I try to be respectful. It's just I have to go by the facts and the research that I have, you know, done. And also, you know, working at IBM and having that experience with chemical exposure, you know, back then we just didn't know what we know now. You know, nobody knew, you know, that these chemicals in our environment, the, the spill, notably, or EJ factor, you know, the EJ um, two company, you know, they were contributing to all this toxic. Um, Solution, and now we know. So why are yeah. we allowing? You know, why are we not looking to our past to protect our future? I mean, all these people that have cancer in the plume. I mean, I, I really feel that these companies—they know we're already polluted. They salivate all over us because they feel like what's another? What's a little bit of pollution? You know, and um, they've already been. You know, they've already got that. So it disheartens me because. You know, I really thought that we tonight um, we were going to do the right thing, and I really didn't. Mm. Like you, Claudia, I I agree with you. I really thought strongly they would listen. Yes, and we're at the very least let you speak. Did you see everybody oh trying to get you to speak? Yes. Yeah. Let our attorney speak, and it was nothing. We got nothing. No, I was. 
raising my hand. I was trying to find the little, the blue button to let you raise your hand on Zoom, and there wasn't that. There's no chat box. It's like, they're, they're ridiculous. The whole thing about the public um, sharing of visitors, they really, I mean, I'll go back to the undemocratic thing. Like, I can't believe they aren't letting people speak or have come to the meeting. Like other you know, other towns, other municipalities are finding a way to do this now. Why isn't Endicott? Well, you know what's interesting about about a week ago, I was driving by um, the village, um, the village building, and out in front of the fire station was Linda Jackson and about four or five police officers and firemen, and none of them were wearing masks, and they were probably within about you know a couple of inches of each other. I you know I kind of wish I had gotten a picture. You know, yeah. because those are, you know what I mean? Because it, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, if we're talking about practicing social distancing, you know, and that's why we can't speak, but yet you're not. And that's why she's so worried about having people in the building. Right. I mean, it's Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> 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 oh. So, so, so. All right, guys, so, I'm going to pop off. Okay, well. Yeah, that, um, real quick, I, I got to go to the party. I think it's real quick. Um, so what's our next step? So the only the only okay. the only reason I was thinking of that, uh, Claudia, is because it was it was my understanding, and you can correct me if if I'm wrong, but it was my understanding that you I don't know whether it was the, the direction that your clients wanted to take you in, or a, it was a budgetary thing, or or it was just a, a time you you didn't have. But I my understanding was you didn't have any interest on in suing the DEC over the permit. You were only going to sue the village. Is that correct? Right. Right. So if so, even yeah, if absolutely. even even if we found somebody with a pocket with a pocketbook, you still wouldn't be interested in suing the DEC because it would be outside the interest of your other clients or something like that. Or no, I'm not saying that. Okay, because I'm I'm just trying to figure out if because I I know we have to sue the DEC, and I'm just trying to figure out do we need another attorney? If you're willing to take that on, we'll find you somebody with a purse. <laughs> Well, keep working at it. If you find one, let me know. <laughs> okay. Well, I found one before. We can do this again. <laughs> Thank you for your time. God bless you, Claudia. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for your good work. Bye. Bye.